Well, we've got Andrea Stigant with us today, who's our uh, lymphedema specialist, and I'm delighted she's brought some pictures in to show us. So, um, let's have a look at the first slide, shall we, Andrea? Next one. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking at here is mild and, well, no, it's moderate swelling, but it's uncomplicated. And it's un uncomplicated because you can see that the legs are normal shape, the skin's in good condition, you can't see any skin changes, which you'll see from further slides uh, that de develop as lymphedema is long-standing and if it's not treated these skin conditions and changes do develop. So that's the first one. Certainly a marked contrast isn't it? I mean that's mm. the normal in there Yeah. and we've got pretty gross swelling even though it's uncomplicated all the, mm. way, up, all the way up the leg. Absolutely. And how, how would this feel to the patient? Very heavy, tight, mm. um, they're prone to cellulitis as well, so right. they've always got to be vigilant for signs of cellulitis. In fact, this is a young girl in her 20s, and she's got swelling now because she had cellulitis in that right ankle when she was 13. And once that had resolved, she always had a slightly thicker ankle on that side, but as she's gone through puberty, it's, the, the swelling's become more pronounced. So, so the cellulitis in earlier life damaged the lymphatic mm, vessels? Yeah. So presumably there's fibrosis or something in the lymphatic That's vessels. That's it, they just get scarred up, yeah. Mm. And presumably she can't bend the ankle very well. I mean, she won't be able to jog, will she? She does. She, she, does, she? does remarkably well. Because usually lymphedema, in, at this stage, it's not going to hamper too much activity other no. than the feeling of the aching and the heaviness. Um, but s some people, particularly as it gets more severe and as the skin stretches, they can feel quite sort of burning sensations or it can feel like they've got neuropathic pain, they can get tingling and, and shooting pains, just because the nerves are squashed, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but at this stage, it's usually, it, it's the heaviness that's the, the main problem. Yeah. Uh, and the disfigurement, lots of body image well, It's a young, young girl, isn't it? I mean, yeah. she's 20 years old, and she's not going to be very happy about that. Yeah, she's really worried. She won't wear yeah. skirts, she wears baggy jeans and baggy trousers all the time. So it affect all her lifestyle, really, Absolutely. It? Yeah. And, and, yeah, th things like, when you meet a new partner, you mm. know, how do you introduce yeah. the fact that you've got a long-term condition? Mm. Albeit it's not making her ill, but it does yeah. have an impact on her life. And I think the other thing for me is it shows the importance of recognising the cellulitis at an earlier stage. Yeah, and treating it appropriately. So, so presumably, if the cellulitis, when she first got it, had been really attacked with antibiotics, it, there'd be less inflammation, less damage. Chances are, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what sort of prognosis have we got uh, here, Andrew? Well, she'll always have that swelling. At the moment, since this picture's been taken, she's had a course of compression bandaging and um, massage, and mm. it's less now than it was. What we're finding with her is because she's very young and active, that whatever compression stocking we put her in, even the very strong compressions, she still gets rebound swelling, because mm. she's still got that, that slack in her tissues from when we did the bandaging and reduced the size. Mm. So what she does now is she wears a stocking every day and wears it for work and play and everything um, and when it needs extra support if she's doing a lot of heavy work or, or jogging or when she's at work she'll wear a velcro device over the top that just gives it some extra stiffness yeah. as well and that actually is that regime is keeping it under control. Mm. How do we know this isn't a venous uh, condition? Well, she's not showing any signs of any venous uh, problems. She's not got any broken thread veins or any mm. signs of uh, venous back pressure. Um, and I guess there's no staining, is there? It no, looks, there's nothing it's, like it's that. It's like normal skin, isn't it? Yeah, just... yeah. And quite often with a, a, a venous problem as well, you would tend to notice it round the foot and ankle first. Uh, and it rarely really travels above the knee, whereas you can see with her, she's got swelling in her thigh so as well. The whole leg's affected, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so basically what you're saying is there's permanent fibrosis to her lymphatic drainage vessels. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be an and, ongoing problem. Yeah, and the thing about the lymphatic system as well is it drains the, um, the big protein molecules from your tissues. Yeah. So if they're not draining effectively, you have a, a high protein fluid mix in, in the tissues of that leg. That then hinders the, um, the work of the macrophages so that they're even more prone to recurrent cellulitis and other infections. Okay. It also degrades the, um, the quality of the skin right. as so, well, the dermis. Right. So the pl presence of plasma proteins in the tissue spaces? In high con concentrations. Yeah, it's going to be osmotic so it's going to attract more water. Yeah. And it's going to inhibit macrophage activity as well. Yeah, yeah. 
And the other thing is that once these patients get infections, obviously the, the bugs have got to travel to the lymph nodes to be recognised by the by the immune system yeah. so that they'll fight the bugs. Mm -hmm. And lymphatic transport is much slower as well, so mm -hmm. often the infection is more deep-seated before they start to exhibit systemic signs. Oh, okay, right. So, so we need a high index of suspicion for local infection Absolutely. in these patients. Absolutely, and, and there are some slides later on looking yeah. at signs of cellulitis. And we'll give it a guess, aggressive antibiotic treatment at, at an early stage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good. Should we have another one? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so this is another lady with um, just mild swelling. Um, just, sorry, okay. I just need to go this one down. Right. Um, so she, her swelling is not actually much worse than the previous one, but why I've put that one in is because you can start to see mm. sk skin creases starting to develop. Yeah. And this is really typical in lymphedema. And also she's got a little bit of chronic edema, uh, chronic inflammation, sorry, yeah. starting to show up here. Is that infection it, or is it? No, no. And it's sometimes that's mistaken for infection, but these patients in the long term quite often will develop just chronic inflammation. It's a chronic low-grade grumbling sort of changes in the tissues, right. which subside a lot with appropriate treatment. So with good skin care and compression and exercise, often those signs of inflammation will be less evident. So this patient has been had the edema for a few years now, presumably, or? Yes, yeah, she, she'd had it for, for a few years and it had not been treated. Um, the best way to manage chronic edema is to treat them early and then they don't go on to develop <coughs> these skin changes mm. and the uh, tissue changes. But at the moment you can see her toes are not particularly affected um, and she's got quite a good leg shape there so you know it, it's it's kind of on the cusp between being uncomplicated and being complicated yeah. and the reason that skin folds are significant is because if you've got very deep skin folds that has an impact on your hosiery selection because you want patients in compression, but you want them in appropriate compression. Yeah. And um, whereas the vascular stockings are all circular knit garments, they knit on a circular loom, and so the, the threads pull in towards the middle all the time. Um, if you get someone with a ve very deep and skin folds, that will then pull the fabric into the folds and it will have a tourniquet effect within the folds. So those patients you need to think about other types of hosiery like flat knit garments and you can get them on prescription right. in the UK yeah. but um, you just have to know what products are available or Absolutely. who to refer to to get them. Yeah. So what do we mean by complicated? What, what is complicating it? Um, for her the, the complications are the fact that she's got she's starting to get soft tissue changes yeah. because of um, the chronic inflammation right, and also she's, she's starting to get these deepened skin folds right. yeah. um, but we'll go on to look at more skin changes as well which can complicate things um, yeah. and the other thing is if there's a shape distortion so some patients will have a lot of swelling down here mm -hmm. and then very little up on the thigh so that would mean that they then had a shape distortion within that limb because it's no longer a normal shape yeah um, and the other thing that complicates it is if they've got swelling which affects the, the trunk uh, so uh, if, if it affects the midline, it's very difficult to um, put compression on there. Yeah. And, and the normal measures like stockings and sleeves are out mm. of the question. Mm. Mm. Uh, and you have to look at how you can compress abdomens and thoraxes and you know, around the pelvis and things. Um, and they're more difficult to manage, so they then become complicated. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you can see that this one is severe and complicated mm. um, and I think the next slide is of the same lady um, so you can see that both her legs are affected mm. um, she's got the deepened skin folds you know this is what yeah. can develop after this won't come on over a year this is many years worth of untreated mm. swelling so she's got deepened skin folds you can see it here and you can see it here quite well, pronounced isn't it up. She's definitely got a shape distortion because there's no way on earth that that is a normal shape for a leg. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's not really got, her toes are not particularly swollen. They are a little bit. Mm. I would have expected them to be worse. And she's obviously got a very um, full forefoot as well. Um, but she's got these skin changes, these sort of warty growth, these papillomas. Yeah. And that happens because you get little watery blisters. As the lymph's trying to find a way to drain, it'll go where there's least pressure. And often when they've got a lot of swelling, the least pressure 
is up at the, the level of the skin. Mm. So mm. it forms little blisters and over time the skin around them becomes more fibrotic and, and changes and you get these warty growths. See that on the previous one yeah. fairly clearly. Yeah. yeah. What do we call um, those? They're papillomas. Papillomas. Right, yeah. 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 And you can see that the skin is, is quite dry as well. This is a lady who's been having some treatment previous to this just in the last sort of few weeks so her skin is actually a lot better than it was wow. when she was yeah. first when she first presented but she's already you know still got quite a lot of dry skin and here where you can see that little break in the skin there yeah. that's something that as a healthcare professional you need to keep an eye on and you need to instruct your patient about because that's a potential portal for bacteria to get in again and cause cellulitis which would make mm. swelling worse and give, make the patient unwell and, and she's massively pain. prone to cellulitis yeah and, and what it, you're saying is this patient could get cellulitis sepsis and mm. it's yeah. a life-threatening condition isn't yeah. it yeah yeah and some patients will end up being blue lighted into hospital with septicemia and things right um but the majority of patients once they're on treatment they will know that they've got to be observant for signs of cellulitis and at the first sign they get an appointment with the doctor that day they don't say yeah. oh I'll wait and see what happens tomorrow mm. they go that very day and get antibiotics and get it mm. under, under control and in terms of the activities of daily living I mean could this lady walk she could walk a limited amount but obviously she can't get her feet together to walk so she's walking with a waddle I mean you could see as well she's very obese yeah. which is a contributing factor um, mm. And obesity is, is a known cause of chronic edema. Yes. Um, so you'd want to be looking at um, advice about you know d healthy diet mm. and things. Mm. And I mean, exercise is very difficult for patients when they're at, at this stage because it you know obviously just the bulk, sheer bulk of the leg will start to impede how much flexion she's got at mm. her knee and, and at her ankle as well because she can't pull her foot up as far as you or I would because of the bulk of the the overhang of the swelling so presumably she's more prone to dvt as well then mm. just because of the immobility yeah. yeah yeah it's not because of the lymphedema itself mm. but yeah as you say it's, mm. it's the immobility yeah wow do you know what caused this andrea because it's obviously a bilateral long-term condition uh, I don't in her case because she's not actually on my case load. I, no, I was okay. just asked to go in and, and give him some advice yeah. on specific aspects yeah. um Right. But I know she lives in a, in an area where they do where they have no lymphedema service. Right. So this has. So happened. it's got worse and worse and worse. Yeah, yeah. If it had been managed in the earlier stages, it would never have got to this this point. Yeah. If if she'd been compliant with the management, of course, because mm. that's another biggie. With when you're looking at chronic edema and lymphedema mm. management, you need compliant patients because you're looking at lifestyle changes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Now, this is a lady who's had a, a long history of uh, venous problems. She's also yeah. in heart failure. Um, you can see so the venous uh, engorgement the there, can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. All around here. And yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a bit of a misconception where heart failure is concerned that swollen legs are inevitable and that it's dangerous to try and treat them and push the fluid out of the legs. But that's not the case because if the heart failure is stable on medication, but they've still got chronic edema, I would argue you need to treat that because the, just the fact that there's chronic edema there makes them more likely to go on to develop lymphedema with all the long-term changes that that brings. Yep. So as long as patients are stable on the medication, what I would do with, with a patient like that is teach skincare and gentle exercise w within their limits, obviously, but look at very gentle compression to start off with mm. and maybe just one leg, treat one leg first mm. and then once you've pushed the fluid out of that leg, mm. then start on the other leg and again start gently on that one and then get them into long-term hosiery. Yeah, so is this for swelling at the moment mostly venous congestion or is the yeah. lymphedema developing? No, I would say that's just it's just congestion, right. venous congestion. Which is very much at risk for the development of lymphedema. Absolutely. That would yeah. superimpose on the venous hypertension. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's important as healthcare professionals that we recognise these patients at this stage before they develop lymphedema because then you're going to improve their quality of life. That's one of the key messages of this video really, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. Recognise this at an early stage and prevent the fibrosis of the lymphatic yeah. vessels that's going to give rise to long-term lymphedema in the future. That's it, yeah. Because yeah. this lady, I mean, you can tell just from the picture that she's got pitting edema. Yeah. Uh, it's very soft and squishy, whereas on the previous slide, with the, the lady with the very big legs, you could see that those tissues were going to be really fibrotic and hard and there's no way that they would pit. 
right? Because those tissue changes have occurred already in her. It's almost as if there's a crust on the top of it, isn't it? Yeah, in, in the skin, but also in, in, in the, the tissues themselves. Tissues, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Now this is dependency edema. Mm -hmm. It's a lady in a nursing home, and she's got a bit of venous back pressure, and you can you can yeah, see you can veins see and there, things yeah. here, but not as bad as the previous lady. Mm. But she's obviously got a problem with swelling and uh, you know changing shape of her, of her ankles. She finds it difficult to get footwear. I mean, obviously she's she's got deformed toes as well, yeah. you know, here and here, and that impacts on what footwear she can have. But the fact that her, her feet and her ankles are so swollen means that she is wearing often inappropriate footwear and you can see her slippers behind mm. and they were quite new but she mm. had an old pair in that room that were just completely worn down at one side so that affects the mobility the fact that she can't get the velcro across to fasten them properly makes her unsafe when she's walking so here she has a history of venous congestion as we can see but yeah. most of this swelling is the superimposed lymphedema it's, is it again i would say that's chronic edema she's not got right. the long-term changes Right. Um, so it's uh, primarily venous then? Yeah. 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 But again, yeah. it's looking at recognising that and treating mm. it appropriately. Um, mm. So she'd need bandaging to normalise the shape of her, her ankles and then she, yeah. would, she would fit into an off-the-shelf compression garment mm. for venous conditions. But one of the things is, that you sometimes notice is if you put someone in a, a stocking for vi a venous condition, they will still sometimes swell despite the fact that they're in a stocking because there's too much elastic give in that stocking for that patient. So if that happens, you want to put them in a stocking that's designed for lymphedema, which has a, a much stiffer fabric. And so it prevents that swelling from building up during the day, but it gives them low resting pressures. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. And then they just take them off at night as normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah just wear it yeah. Like, like clothing. And obviously her feet are down, so the, the edema's like gone down yeah. the way, hasn't it? Yeah, that's it, just completely dependent. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, you can see on, on this leg where, where the swelling stops, virtually yeah. there's quite a distinct area. And you see this a lot in nursing homes because patients are, or clients are sat out um, in chairs all day, often with nothing on the legs, and they sit for long periods of time being inactive. Mm. Mm. So the fluid's like filled up till it's got yeah. to there, just, yeah. just yeah. with and a when she goes to, effect. And when she goes to bed at night, yeah. that swelling will go down because the blood pressure will be less when she's laying flat. Um, and so the her legs look fairly normal in the morning. Yeah, and it just builds and up. It builds the up day. during the day. So I saw. Her, I think mm. this slide was taken late morning. So that's how much the fluid had built up just in the few hours she'd been up. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So the, I mean, the message there is skincare and activity as well yeah. as as appropriate hose. You get her up, get her walking around. Yeah, yeah. Because she could skin. walk. Mm. She she walked from a day room into mm. her own room, which was. Mm. You know, it was probably 20 or 30 metres. Mm. It was a fair walk for someone her age because she's very elderly. But she could do it, but she didn't do it very often in a day. Yeah. And that has a big effect at reducing the swelling. If Absolutely. You the yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, this lady... Let me just sort this out. Can we just pause that? Yeah, what are we looking at here, Andrea? Now, this is a, a lady who's got, um, she's a palliative patient. I think she had um, an ovarian cancer, and now she's got tumour mass growing in the pelvis. And so that's putting pressure and back, causing back pressure in her pelvic lymphatic drainage mm. nodes. So what you're seeing here is swelling in both legs. Um, she's she's an, another elderly lady, but always been very fit and active, always went out dancing. Um, and for her, even though she was in the last few weeks of life, looking down at her legs, looking like this, she found really distressing. distressing yeah, yeah. Now that's very soft swelling, a um, little bit of shape distortion around the ankles, but mm. nothing much. And, and what someone like that would need is, again, just gentle compression. Maybe even just a stocking liner that gives you 10 millimetres of mercury at the ankle. Um, just to help support the tissues during the day and stop the, the swelling from building up quite so much and again she was a lady that at night the swelling went down to some extent it was very soft and pitting and what we actually did was just put some gentle bandaging on her just support bandaging just to get the size down a little bit quicker for her um, 
and then into just very gentle compression, just a class one, I think she had in the end. But some palliative patients wouldn't even mm. tolerate that. Um, so in those patients, you'd look at just putting a, a tubular bandage on, like, um, I don't know, Tubifast or something like that. Um, just just to give that little bit of support because patients find that that's comfortable mm -hmm. and again you look at skincare and just gentle active exercises just you know bending the foot up and down or bending and stretching the knee if they're sat in a chair mm -hmm. um, but because any kind of movement actually helps to drain the fluid mm -hmm. that little bit quicker i'm sure she appreciated yeah. the the benefit she did because for her she she wanted to put her dancing shoes on she knew she couldn't go dancing yeah but she wanted to be able to feel she could put her shoes on Absolutely. when she was sitting mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. and she did get to that stage mm -hmm. for a that's, few days before she died that's good yeah, yeah it just it's, it's little yeah. things like that that make a difference to quality of life I Absolutely. Think. Yeah. yeah now then this lady has got um very definite signs of long-standing venous disease. Yeah, She's we, got we, lipodermatosclerosis. We can see blown up veins yeah. there, can't we? we can yeah. see, is that hemosida in there? Yeah. The hemosiderosis? yeah. Just ignore the black blobs. That's because I've been measuring the volume of her <laughs> legs. And I, right. I'd marked her up because I take measurements every four centimetres and calculate them volumes. Okay. And then the measurements on the inside of her legs <coughs> are because I've been taking measurements there and here and, and one point here and right. further up, just to do some made to measure stockings because obviously when you're looking at a leg like that it's not a normal shape and if you put someone into an off-the-shelf stocking what's going to happen is they'll get they, they won't get that nice compression gradient that you need because you, you want a normal ankle and calf shape to get a compression gradient that's higher at the ankle and, and gradually less towards the uh, the top of the leg um, so she was one of these patients who needed made to measure but you can see she's just come into clinic and she's had her ordinary socks on and you can see yep. where they've left an indentation quite, quite pronounced so, isn't it on, yeah. yeah so she's got obviously very pitting edema mm. so is this primarily venous or is yeah it, it is yeah. yeah yeah get a lot of patients like this um, and it's just a question of getting them onto appropriate management at an early stage and then they won't go on to develop lymphedema right absolutely mm. Now, this lady, you might look at and say, well, she's just fat and, and overweight. And, and often these patients really struggle. What she's actually got is a, pa a condition called lipedema or lipedema, and it's an abnormal deposition of fat cells within the tissues. So you quite often see a lot of this dimpling. But the other thing you notice is, really, she's not got much swelling over a foot. And that's, that's one of the um, features of lipedema is that they get foot sparing, they don't get swelling there, but from their ankles upwards they can get swelling and it can affect all of the legs or just below knee, it can affect their arms. Sometimes I've known some patients have it more or less up to the waist. And no matter, they'll go to, to see someone about to see a GP and they'll be told that they're obese and they need to lose weight. What happens when they lose weight is they lose the weight off the bits that are unaffected so they can be very thin and skeletal almost sort of for the chest and their arms and their head but then still look like this wow. below the waist mm. and they find psychologically that's very difficult um, if they have difficulty with footwear sometimes if, if they've got more um, poor shaping around their ankles she, she didn't find footwear too much of a problem um, but it's clothing the, the other thing is that there's a common name for it is that painful fat syndrome because they're exquisitely tender on the skin and really that I mean there's no cure for it but what we do know is if that's not managed in light compression they do go on to develop a lymphedema over the top of that right. so um, right. the best thing for them is just a class one very light compression um, and reassurance that it's actually not them that's overweight mm. it is a, it's mm. a medical condition so is this genetic or I mean, she had this in ch since childhood? Do you know, I'm not sure actually whether that one's genetic or yeah. not. I don't I mean, see too many patients with it, yeah. but I think that's because of lack of awareness. I mean, normally it's the distribution of adipocytes that determines where adipose tissue is going to be stored, isn't it? So I would, I would, I would imagine she's been born with an abnormal distribution of adipocytes. Mm, I, yeah. I don't know, to yeah. be honest. No, it's OK. But it is just one of those conditions yeah. that we need to be aware of. Yeah. So again, it's very much 
she doesn't want this and lymphedema superimposed exactly. on top of that. And yeah. we, we can we might not be able to cure this, but we can stop her getting the lymphedema as yeah. well. Yeah, and I mean, on the slide, she actually looks like she's got some papillomas developing around this area. Yeah. But when I saw her, they weren't actually. She'd got a few spots, but um, she'd been putting some cream from the doctors on them and they mm. were subsiding. Uh, they, they were actually uh, papillomas. Good. Okay. Now, this, this is looking at arm swelling. We've looked at a lot of legs up to now. Yep. But obviously lymphedema can affect arms as well. And um, that lady had breast cancer. Right. And she, she was palliative at this stage. But although she's got this huge arm, and it, it's complicated because it's affecting her fingers as Kiss well. It, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and she's starting to get these deepened skin creases, but not, not to too much extent. But the, the shape of the arm, the distribution of the swelling, made her arm shape completely normal. Right. So even though a patient's palliative, that doesn't always make the management of them compli complicated or complex. You, you would just be looking at trying to reduce the size to some extent um, and then get her into just light compression just for comfort. So she was bandaged and went with skin care and, and exercise and then went into a, a compression sleeve. I imagine bandaging the fingers is fairly important as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, and, and that's one of the things with bandaging. If you've got someone who's got uh, chronic swelling, is you need to make sure that you bandage right from the tips of the fingers or right from the toes if you're bandaging legs. Because otherwise what will happen is, if you bandaged from here, yep. you'd get a, a line of pressure there that was higher than the pressure in the fingers. Yeah. And so you'd get back pressure in the fingers, so fluid will, and blood would be going in, mm. but it wouldn't be able to drain out very well, so you'd end up with even more, much, swelling, more yeah. swelling in the mm. fingers, even though you control the arm swelling. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Now, this is another lady, again a palliative patient with breast cancer, but you can see with her, she's got a very abnormal shape mm. because she's not got hardly any swelling here. But her hand and her arm are huge and particularly her hand. So that is more complex and you've really got to do a lot of work on trying to normalise the shape with the compression bandaging before you could ever think about a compression sleeve for a patient yeah. like that. But the other measures remain the same. It's effective skin care and it's uh, promoting exercise. Obviously this is a, a, a lady who's poorly um, so you wouldn't be saying, I want you to do lots and lots of exercise and movement, yeah. but it's just things like if you're washing your hands while they're in the warm water, just give them some exercise because that's quite soothing. Mm. Or um, if you've been sat for an hour or two and you, th you suddenly think, oh, I've not moved in the last hour or so, just give your arm a bit of a bend and stretch. You know, no nothing complicated, but it's just general movement and functional movement mm. often. Well, there's a much advantage of popping those po on pillows so you get a bit of gravity there is some. There's some advantage in terms of you, you, you would lower the, um, the pressure within the blood vessels so you wouldn't get as much fluid leaking out in the first place. Um, but quite often when patients, breast cancer patients have got to this stage, they'll have axillary uh, involvement. And so yeah. you've got to be aware of what pathologies, mm. you, you know, whether they're going to be comfortable with their arm in elevation, because that, that is quite an issue for some of these patients. And yep. you'll see that on mm. uh, one of the slides in a minute or two. Yep. Now, there you go. So this, this is a lady, again, dif different to the last lady, because she's got a fairly normal shape apart from the, um, the, the, the skin fold yeah, there. Yeah. But if you're looking at movement, this area was extremely painful on movement. So you've really got to think about how you can modify your techniques. Because you want to promote movement as far as possible, but you don't want to make a patient be in pain unnecessarily. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is another palliative lady with breast cancer. Um, now she had, she, she was part way through a course of bandaging and she'd had her fingers bandaged, um, but she'd got a brachial plexus lesion and so she'd not got very much sensation in her fingers mm. and she couldn't feel where her arm was in space. She'd got no proprioception and she actually just knocked that on a radiator while she got the bandages on and that caused wounds that were then quite difficult to... Because uh, you, you can't put too much compression on fingers, um, but we wanted to get some compression on to try and decrease the swelling and promote healing. Because at this stage as well, she didn't eat very much, so her nutritional state was poor, so she didn't heal very well either. Um, so it's just, just in there to show you that that would then complicate the management even further. 
Certainly. It looks pretty, I, I, my guess would be there's some infection around there. Yeah. And there was at that stage. A bit pussy in the wound. Yeah, yeah. Quite nasty. Yeah. So back to legs now and looking at long term skin changes. So what you can see right. in this lady is deep and skin folds and all this area and on this leg as well in this area was very firm and pitty. And this is a lady who'd had lymphedema for many years following um, a, a, a pelvic cancer which had been successfully treated. Um, and she's had long-term lymphedema management, so believe it or not, this is, this is the improved picture. Because mm. um, she, she did get treatment in another lymphedema centre before mm. I saw her. Well, having but, seen some of the other pictures, I can understand that. Yeah. yeah, so you can see she's got deepened skin folds here and here. She's also starting to develop them here as well, yeah. which is less usual. Mm. They would usually develop them horizontally rather mm. than vertically. Yeah. But here you've got a lot of the papillomas. papillomas mm. and. I, I've known her at times, I mean, that one there, the very shiny one, is more of a lymphangioma, that's not become very organised yet. But because these are developing in that crease, it's difficult to get compression on. So although she's been wearing a compression stocking, as this new lymphangioma has developed, it's not been adequately compressed and so it's been allowed to develop. So what we needed to do with her was put extra, wear, yes, wear made-to-measure stockings, but she had extra compression in the shape of a little pad that okay. went just exactly over that area that she could yeah. just tuck down inside to improve that. Um, so she, she had made-to-measure stockings on. When I first met her, she had a made-to-measure on this leg and a, an off-the-shelf one on this leg because there's not the shape distortion. Yeah. But she actually found, as she got older, that the made-to-measures were easier to put on. So, in terms of promoting her independence, she ended up with made-to-measure stockings, just because the fabrics got different properties. Mm. So they both did the, the right job for her legs, but she could put them on independently. So these papillomas are fairly diagnostic of, of lymphedema, then, are they? Yeah, yeah. You don't really see them in any other condition yeah. that I'm aware of. Mm. Yeah. And how, how many years development would this be? Oh, she—that's twenty years plus. Long term. Yeah. 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 